because I realized that I speak all the love languages, like <laughs> all of them. Um, so the first one being words of affirmation. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second being quality time. The third being receiving gifts. Uh, the fourth being act of service, and the fifth being physical touch. Mm. Okay, so you're you're saying to me that all of them apply to you. They do, which is <laughs> fine. But do you? But again, I I'm of the belief system that there's got to be like maybe one or two that are your top or sort of your go tos. Would Would you say that you have a couple that are sort of a little more important than the others? Welcome to the Womanhood Lectures, where each week we bring you issues and discussions around things that are important to you, the modern day woman. We hope to inspire, we hope to expand your your mind a little bit, and we hope to bring up some interesting discussion and discourse in our topics. I'm one of your hosts, Yasmin. And I'm Lyra. And check us out on YouTube, uh, Rumble. We're also on Instagram. Uh, just definitely listen to us, connect with us. Any comments you have for us, we'll, we'll definitely take into consideration. But yes, today's topic is love languages, mm-hmm. which is good timing because... We're coming up to Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Come on, no, let's I let's know. show the love. We're here in pink. Know, We're we here. Pink We're celebrating. Today, which was, uh, you know, a choice because I think it is a, a sign of things to come, right? It's so. kind of funny that we were thinking of the same thing. Yes, we literally. Were. I was like, we oh, were. I have this really cute pink top. You're like, oh, I have this, I have this too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that was beautiful. So, so I think it's I think it's very, uh, very in keeping with talking about the five love languages, which is a book, by the way. Um, I can't remember the author's name, Gary, but like yeah. Well, in any case, it's I, I think it's a must read for anyone who wants to have a successful and positive relationship with your significant other. Um, you know, whether you're uh, in a heterosexual relationship or a, or not, I think there are lots of things that can be taken from this book. So we're going to be talking about things from the perspective of our our experiences, obviously, um, which uh, we're both married and uh, we have, we've been married actually quite some time <laughs> with our husbands, yeah. right? We're, we're past the decade mark. I'm actually at the two decade mark. So yeah. Yeah. I'm, Long. I'm a little You're almost there. A decade. Um, I've been with uh, my husband for about 18 years. Okay. Um, yeah. And it's been, I would say, very challenging, to say mm-hmm. the least. Um, but back to the book, The Love Languages, it is actually written by Gary Chapman. Okay. Um, and my understanding uh, in general is that it does help people who have been in long-term relationships work out their relationships and figure out how to show up to for one another. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that was mentioned uh, in the book is that, you know, there's there's romantic love, <laughs> and then usually that typically just dissipates, disappears after a period of time. The average time frame is two years. Oh so if my you're looking Lord. at an 18-year relationship, I wow. mean, it's you know it's unfortunate, but uh, what you're left with is about 16 years on average of what exactly? Hard right? work. Hard work. Commitment, commitment, sticking yeah. together, figuring yeah. it out, battles, you know, mm-hmm. uh, maybe a couple of sleepless nights, maybe a couple of I'm going to go to bed angry tonight um, situations. Um, so when reading this book, it was very for me, it was it, it kind of hit home because I realized that I speak all the love languages, like <laughs> all of them. Um, so the first one being words of affirmation, mm-hmm. uh, the second being quality time. The third being receiving gifts. Uh, the fourth being act of service. And the fifth being physical touch. Mm. Okay, so you're you're saying to me that all of them apply to you. They do. Which is <laughs> fine. But do you, but again, I, I'm of the belief system that there's got to be like maybe one or two that are your top or sort of your go-tos. Would, would you say that you have a couple that are sort of a little more important than the others? I would say um, words of affirmation for sure, um, Mm -hmm. because I am a career person. So career is very important to me. And obviously, you know, raising kids, you know, empowering them, building them. I feel that, you know, in my relationship, I need to 
to hear that. Like I need to hear the support. I need to have words of affirmation. I need to feel good about myself. I need to, you know, have somebody who's supportive, even in the words that they say. If words can hurt, they can also empower. So I believe that there's that that mm-hmm. that yeah. situation that would help for sure. So does it so is it important for you for people to notice, for your partner to notice? that um, you've done something well or that you've done something for them Um, like just kind it's like a like having that recognition and then that appreciation yes I think anybody um I hate to say it but I think all around most women do want to be recognized right for what they do for their hard work you know especially if you're a mom you're raising kids you're doing all the work in the house maybe feel that you know you're doing more than your partner is you won't want to feel like hey you know someone's there saying thank you Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. thank you for doing that for me today that alleviated alleviated a lot of pressure and a lot of time in my uh day for you so yes words of affirmation i think are very important Mm -hmm. the second (laughs) yeah um the second being physical touch and i don't mean that just you know to the level where you need to have uh, I guess you could say sex, a sexual relationship all the time, but, you know, just touch, like whether it be cuddling, whether it be holding hands, whether it be, you know, intimacy, like intimacy, a deep, deep intimacy with your partner. So, yeah. yeah. Like you feel your intimacy through that physical touch. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. that's probably why I smothered my children. <laughs> Um, when they were young I always wanted to hold them and cuddle them because I I believe that that was Mm. uh, that's a language I think that they've they're they've learned through me because that's something that uh, was important to me so yeah yeah that's really that's really it's it's so funny because those two are the two um love languages that I actually think my husband has oh so he really likes physical touch and words of affirmation okay now he might be like "Eh, I don't really care about words of affirmation but like yeah, it makes a difference. Like okay. that, that sort of appreciation. Like, to be like hey, you're doing well. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for doing this for me today. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Whether he recognizes it or not, I can see that he responds to it. Okay. Yeah. It's 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 really interesting. I think a lot of men actually um, don't realize and think that kind of like if they were to look at this, they'd be like, oh yeah, physical touch, right? A lot of men might mm. might think that, but I've met a lot of men, especially through my practice um that need those words of affirmation and they don't realize it until we sort of dig deep and they're like oh yeah it really does make a difference when my partner says like they appreciate something or they you know really um love something that i did or that they even like recognize it right like i i I kind of feel like that's like that's like a masculine trait of like having that recognition yes you know doing that yeah for doing things and what about um you but me yeah I, <laughs> what you know, about you yes, yeah I was sort of looking at this and I was thinking it's interesting because I was kind of thinking about like what do I do all the time like how do I show up because that's probably a clue to what I want and what really came through was like acts of service um because I really appreciate when people sort of without asking me without saying anything will just kind of go and do things and I always notice it like if my kids, you know, um, clean the house and I don't have to ask them to do stuff, I will immediately be like, oh my God, thank you guys. Like that was amazing that you did that. So I think that because I notice it so much, the acts yeah. of service is a big thing for me. Um, and because I, I mean, I do so much, like, you know what it's like when you're, a lot. when you're a yeah. working woman, um, in this day and age, like you're going to work, you're coming home and like typically, typically like you're cooking and then you're doing like your second shift and then you're doing the unpaid Uber driving thing for your kids at night, right? And it's kind of like if someone can pick up some of the slack for me, I'm in like, I'm just so thankful for that. I'm so grateful for it. So I know that's a big thing for me and quality time. Quality time is really important to me. So like I'm someone who's like, I want your undivided attention even if it's just for like 10 minutes, if we're going to have a conversation, I want you to put your phone away and like look me in the eye and have a conversation. Like I want this to like to have a connection in that moment. Right. So I think that's really, really important to me as well. And I have found that, you know, like date nights and like just finding the time to fit it in yeah. have actually, um, you know, really, really helped my relationship a lot. Oh, but great. even if we don't have that, like, you know, a specific date night or a specific thing, 
if I can at least, you know, have that attention um, in terms of like, you're going to have a real conversation with me, you're going to hear what I have to say. Like it used to be like, you know, my husband might be on the phone, for example, right, looking stuff up. And I'll just be, I'll just sit and I'll wait. Like, it's just the funniest thing. Like, he'll ask me a question, then he'll look down at his phone and start scrolling. And I'll just sit and wait. And then he'll look up and he'll be like, oh, yeah, sorry. And he'll put the phone down. Because, like, over time, like, he used to he used to feel like he could do two things, both of them at the same multitasking. time. Multitasking. Yeah. Multitasking, which we all do. And we all feel like, you know, we're pretty good at it. Um, but, like, very silently, I would just be like, I'm going to wait. I'm just not going to answer him until... He actually gives me some eye contact. Right. And so I Full noticed attention. that I was, yeah, I, st- I noticed that I was doing that a lot. And I'm like, oh, like that's really important to me. So that's mm-hmm. kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. But yeah, okay. yeah, that's, that's been my thing. Yeah. So if you were to, so is it selfish to say, uh, I want these things? Like, do you feel that when you're with your partner and you're sitting down and you're ass- like talking about your relationship, is it selfish to be like, hey, listen, this is my love language. This is how I need to be, you know, fulfilled, or this is how I fill up my love tank, which is what he calls it Mm -hmm. in the book. Um, Your love tank, you know, I need to be able to have uh, quality time with you. And I need to see, you know, that there's active acts of service, right? Are you having those conversations? Is it easy to have those conversations for you? After it, all these years, right? It, so. it wasn't before. I used to I used to feel really resentful. I used to be like expecting him to just know. Mm-hmm. Because I'm like, we've been married. I've had kids with you. Like, how do you not know me by now? Right. right? And I think a lot of women do that where they just kind of like silently expect their partners to just know. To read their minds. To right? read their minds, <laughs> to know what they yes. like, what they don't like. And then they feel like you get into this mode of like, well, if you don't know that, then you must not care about me or you're not yeah. paying attention or you must not love me enough, right. right? And the truth of the matter is like that communication piece is so important. Like you just just tell them. Yeah. Like there was a point where I was like, okay, I just need to be like concrete and say, this is what I want. This is what makes me happy. These are the things that, that, and even giving him like specifics, like these are the things that when you do them, I feel so good. And like, I really love it when you do X, Y, Z. Right. Right. Or when you show up and do X, Y, Z. Right. And I would sort of like praise the things. It's almost like catching someone when they're doing something great and doing that positive reinforcement. And it right. sounds, it sounds crazy. Like I did it, I do it with my kids too. Right. So not that I'm treating them like a kid, but like, well, sometimes I don't know, but anyways, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of like, I do think it's important because at the end of the day, I mean, do you want to be right? Or do you want to be happy? Like, do you want to have a good relationship? Then do the things that you need to do in order to have that good relationship. Mm. Right. And if part of it is communicating, part of it is knowing yourself well enough to say, these are the things that are important to me. This is what fills my tank. This is what makes me happy. And then communicating it to your partner to say, these are the things that would really help me feel loved. Right. Right. And generally speaking, if someone cares about you, hopefully they will listen and they will at least make the effort. Mm-hmm. Right. And for some, for some people, you just need to be maybe more specific, more concrete with it and like right. give them things to do. Right. Right. But at the same time, the other thing is like, you can also invite that in by asking your partner, right? And kind of going through it with them and being like, okay, we're here. Out of these five things, what jumps out to you? Right. Right. Which one of these things really jumps out to you? And then you can describe each one, right? And just be like, for an example, like quality time means like when we're talking da da da, or going out on a date night, would you prefer that? Or would you pick something like, um, you know, me, I don't know, doing something around the house, for you or with you, mm, yes, right, and give them maybe examples. I I don't know. I think I think that's really helpful, and it's hard. It's hard to do because a lot of the times we don't actually know what we want. We don't know what we want, but also I think our lives are so busy that sometimes it's like, okay, how do we focus in on our relationship mm. and really get down to the nitty gritty? And then I don't know. Sometimes I feel that. I mean, I can speak from my own relationship, but I think that a lot of women have a hard time speaking to men and men have a hard time opening up about this. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, even when I mentioned that we're going to do love languages, my husband was like, oh, this must be a girl thing. You know, so (laughs) at the end of the day, um, you know, this is a topic uh, for girls. But let's just say you're in a long relationship and you've come to the point where you're like, I am no longer in love with my partner or I'm having issues and I'm thinking about separating one day um, or 
I don't think this is going to last or I don't think it's working or I don't feel that I'm being like I'm, I'm being loved, you know, to be able to sit down and actually have your partner go through this chat. It's an exercise of sorts to say, hey, what is it that makes you tick? What is it that you want? And let's try it out. Let's see what happens when I pay attention to you mm-hmm. and give you some quality time. Uh, let's see what happens when I, you know, physically hold your hand in public or caress you before you go to sleep at night or uh, give you gifts. You know what I mean? Like actually attempt to try those things in your relationship. What's going to happen? Right? Yeah, yeah. Because it's naive to think that when you see a married couple or a couple that's been together for an extremely long time, that it's perfect. Oh my gosh. There's no such thing. No. There's absolutely no such thing. I think it's always a work in progress. There's always things that you're fixing. There's always things that you're trial and erroring on, right? Um, So I think that's really important with this concept with the love languages to work through that with each other yeah and, and i mean give up, you know? and i mean life is always like shifting and changing like it's different when you are say younger you're you're in a relationship versus you're married and you have kids right versus like even the times that um your kids are growing up and going through different you know periods of life like it it affects your relationship in different ways yes. right so you kind of always have to come back to this and things might shift over time but, um, you know, kind of revisiting that and like reiterating for yourself, like it's, I think it's great if you can, as a married couple, come together maybe like once a year, for example, and like do a little, I don't want to say like a plan, but like you kind of almost need a plan of action, yes. right? Of like, hey, this, this is this is what I'm liking. This is where I want us to go, right? Yep. And like, I would love love it if we could do more of this or do less of that or whatever. Like, there's no, there's like, I think people believe that the longer you've been with someone, you just have to know and that everything is just like, you know, set. But I think the longer you stay with someone, the more you actually have to negotiate. Yes. And the the more more you have have to to communicate. Yeah. The more you have to communicate, the more you have to set goals together uh, of where you want to be. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with kind of overcoming that together. But two people would would have to want it. Yeah. So both people would want to have it. I think there's Mm. a lot of conflict in relationships these days. Um, Oh, my gosh. It's very hard to date. And we talked about that in our previous uh, talk about, you know, the way that men and women kind of deal with each other um so this is this is this is a lovely way to say hey you know you're you're not alone uh there's a lot of people who experience these type of challenges in their relationships but how can you come together and try to figure it out on how you can present yourself to your partner right okay so then so then what do you what do you say to those women who are like i'm at my i'm not at like the end of my rope i think i'm done Hmm. so here so here so here's the thing I feel like a lot of us who've been married for a long time, we've had that thought. There's moments, there's moments in your marriage where you're just like, nope, I'm out, right? Okay. Like, right? right. I, I can admit there are times when I've had like, I've been really pushed to my limit mm. where I'm just like, oh, am I, is this really, really where I want to be? Right? Like How's full- the grass on the other side? Full, thing? full yeah. disclosure, right? <laughs> um, oh boy. Right? But, and then you, you have these thoughts. Yes. And then in my case, I come back to the reality of like, actually, no, like I really do want my relationship to work and I really do want to stay married and I really stay want to stay married to him, right? There are times, obviously, where I'm just like, I want to kill him. And then other, but those are, that's normal. Like, I I feel like that's normal. I hope that's normal. Right. But, you know, but then, but then you come back, it's kind of like coming back to reality, coming back to your center and you're just like, wait a second. Okay. Like, you got to remind yourself, like, this is how far we've come. These are the things that I, like, I remind myself, if I can, in those moments when I'm sort of, like, a little more settled, what is it that I love about him? What is it that that I do appreciate? What is it that I do like? Okay, I'm going to focus on that for a while and build myself back up. Now, for women who are, like, really sort of at the end and feeling like, I don't know if this is for me. What do you think? Do you think this is something that would be a good exercise for them? I think so. Yeah. I um, had to listen through and there's a lot of, um, to be frank with you, it was very, I was a li- little bit teary eyed when I was Aww. listening to it. Um, because 
Because as we work through our relationships, you know, it's not always so simple. It's not cut and dry to say everything is just a whole bed of roses. It's not, you know, there's there's challenges. People go through evolutions, especially when you're in a long term relationship. Uh, we evolve, right? We change. This is totally normal, especially in, with that length of time. Um, so coming back to finding each other again and finding like what it is that you that makes you tick, what makes each of you make realize like what makes each of you come together at the end yeah. of the day where are you actually where connected are you, yes where are you right? connecting what is bringing you together um so yes i believe this is a great exercise to do where you are working with each other talking about what each of you needs mm -hmm. like what would make the other person um tick yeah. like happy connected feel like yes my partner is is there for me and that's why i say words of affirmation is really important for me and it, it changes your whole day. It changes how you feel about yourself. It changes how you feel. If, if you try that, even even like venture into that with your partner, I believe that'll be huge. Um, if you show up, I mean, receiving gifts, like it doesn't have to be, I know we're living in this very weird time where it doesn't really mm -hmm. matter what the gift is, but just the thought, like to take a time out of your day to say, hey, my partner, it's Valentine's Day. I'm going to get her, I don't know, chocolates, like, yeah. you know, something. Something. You know, it could be a, it could be a gift in the morning, a gift in the afternoon, and a gift in the evening. All like what, fifteen bucks maybe, and you've made the 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 effort. The effort. That's what it's it is. It's the effort. It's not the actual item. It's the it's the effort that you're putting into um, acts of service. You know, like something helping you in the house, doing certain things, um, saying, hey, you know what, maybe you're tired today. I'm gonna take care of the kids and put them to bed. You know, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's very important. Yeah. So yes, I do believe that this is an exercise, but also a way that couples can come together and say, how do I fix this? How do I make this work? You know, Or make it better. Or make it better. Right? How do I make things better? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, that that unpaid Ubering, oh my gosh, that <laughs> that is the vein of my existence sometimes. Like, honestly, like I'm so tired. I drive around during the day to see clients, right? Yeah. And then I come home and I'm like, and you're driving, I got to drive again. Right? Like, I hate sitting in that car again. But at the same time, you know, if there's if there's a night where where I ask, like that's one of the things I think in my house where I'm like, can you please drive them? And like, and he doesn't like to drive either, like oh. at night. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't want to do it either. So we're both kind of like, uh, like, okay, I'll do the drop off. You do the pickup. Like, we do try and divvy it up. Um, but, like, that's one of the things where it's like both of you don't want to do something, but it needs to be done. Yes. That's a tricky one. That's a tricky one for sure. That is a tricky one. 100%. Yeah. Or, like, or like for example, you want um, – let's just say you want the dishes. Done. So I have a friend of mine um, who wanted help with doing the dishes, right? So she gets her husband to do the dishes, but then she's like cringing, she's gritting her teeth because he doesn't do them mm. in the way that she likes. She's like, oh my gosh, like he- I mentioned that before. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't clean the pot the way that I would want it cleaned. Like right? this, this is driving me crazy, right? And, and I was like- And you go and do it yourself. That's and then you go and do it yourself. Yeah. So then, so then what's, what's the happy medium there? Like for me, I told her, well, you can go back and do it yourself, but you right. can't gripe about it. Right. Because you, he did what you asked him to. He did the dishes and he pretty much did them to the best of his ability and it's not your standard. Okay, so you can go back and do a couple of things. And she was just like, no, but I want them done the way I want them done. And I'm like, yeah. okay, then you have to do them because he's not going to do them that if way. My husband does, right? does the dishes. I like stop and I take a photo. <laughs> like I, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, girl. I'm so excited. I'm like, uh, oh my God, you're doing, I make a big scene out of it. Right. Okay. But it's, it's cute. It's funny, yeah. but you're right. Like sometimes yes. you have to accept what you cannot change, you know? And yeah. there's some yeah. things that I have to accept about him and he has to accept certain things about me. A hundred percent. But again, like there's times where in a relationship context, it's a little different to say, yes, I need you to tell me um, or show up differently for this to work. And um, that's an interesting way to approach your relationship with somebody else to say, I need you to show up differently for me. This is what I need in order to fix uh, mm -hmm. our relationship. And do you so think, so my question then is, do you think that... Is there something in there that feels not authentic or genuine if you have to explain it and tell them? Oh, men? 
Yeah. Like if you had to explain something and be like, I need you to do this and I need you to do that, like, are you okay with that? Or do you have this like little voice in the back of your mind that's like, why do I have to explain this? Like, why do I have to tell you? You well, should that's know. that's the whole thing. And that's why when I was reading it, I was like all teary eyed. I was like, because in the first romantic phase of your relationship, mm-hmm. did you feel like you had to say anything to your partner about any of this stuff? No. Or did you feel, did you feel fulfilled to some degree or was everything just like, it's so amazing. I don't really care. I'm just going to like, you know, accept whatever is bugging me about this person. But Mm -hmm. he's amazing. Like everything's amazing. Right. I think we all start our relationships that way. That way completely like gaga. Right. um, We're like, you know, we're like, yeah, you showed up. Great. You did this. (laughs) Oh, I love it. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Like everything is just amazing. But did they do all of these things? Probably not. Probably not. But we accepted that. But now we're Mm -hmm. saying, hey, I need you to look at this and show up differently for me. And they're looking at you like, what? But then you told me that I have to tell you what I want. Yeah, I have to explain it to you like you're five years old because you're just not (laughs) supposed to naturally be able to do it, right? Yes. So here is the explanation. And I think it is a great way to work on your relationship as long as your partner is, you know, ready to do that with you. You know what I mean? Who's willing ready to fix it you know if they're not then and yeah, you're in that's that a different boat story it's like the, you're coming to an end and you feel like this is the you know direction you're going to um but i do think that it was very helpful reading the book yeah yeah absolutely i believe it was very helpful it's eye-opening for sure <laughs> it is for sure um sometimes we have to accept our partners and when you've been with somebody for a very long time it it just becomes something you're so used to Right, mm-hmm. it becomes something. It's like your daily. Well, the, and there's things life. I think I do think that yeah, over that time there are there are things that you you learn to accept, and maybe they don't become they're not as important they're over not. time. No, right. So this so this this is something that that I've seen in some relationships where let's just say that there's a big emergency, a huge health scare. Right, all that goes out the window. It does. Yeah. You're just like I'm. Just glad that you're here. Yes. I'm glad that you survived. Like I had a friend whose husband had a heart attack quite young Mm. and um, he's fine. He's great now. But in that moment, do you think she cared if he was doing any of this stuff? No, she just wanted him to come home and be alive and like be there for, for his kids. Right. That's that's the gift of appreciation. Yes. So sometimes that's, that's the thing that can like shake you up a little bit and kind of remind you that like, oh yeah, I do care about this person. And like some of that stuff it's great, and sometimes it's there. There's a bigger picture to look at beyond. You know, so I, 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 so on that note, mm-hmm. you know, there is a bigger picture, but you know, in repairing a relationship, it's safe to say that when you give your wife love, like if you give your partner words of affirmation, give her what she needs, show up in a specific way, what happens to that? to your wife doesn't she she show up differently of course doesn't she uh end up having you know quality time with you words of affirmation acts of service maybe your relationship becomes tighter maybe you start to enjoy each other right so you know if 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 i hate it to say it but if you know shit hits a fan and something bad terrible happens or tragic you know at least you've developed that love and fixed what you need to fix to have those memories together that quality time that Mm -hmm. loving relationship is that yeah no that's, that's i mean that's oh the gosh, foundation that's look at you <laughs> look at you yeah no that's the foundation yeah. for sure 100%. for sure yeah i agree so um i think it is effective i think it's great to be able to show up and enjoy this time together because sometimes in marriage you know time just passes mm-hmm. and you haven't quite fixed anything and you haven't mm-hmm. quite like figured it out and maybe you just like deal with it tomorrow because you know you've got kids to uber you've got you know you've got groceries stuff to, do. to go buy you've got food to make you've got your work to go do so um if you can get to repairing things and fixing things for the betterment of your family then it's love. Well, everyone everyone benefits. Everyone. Right? Benefits. It's not just you. It's You're, not just you him. You benefit, kids benefit, family benefits. Your friends not? benefit. Like everyone benefits because mm-hmm. you show up and you're happier and you're a better person. Yes. Right? And 100%. so is he. Yeah. And um yeah, I think I think on that note, um 
I'm just looking forward to Valentine's Day. Ooh. I hope. I hope that <laughs> I just cross my fingers that something's going down. Yeah, but we'll see. Yeah. But are you so so quick quick question for you. Are you someone who likes the gift, the thought, or the surprise? Or like what about that do you like if you were gonna get something? I like words of affirmation, quality time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um I like the surprise mm-hmm. and I, I like the thought. Okay. It doesn't have to be anything. Yeah. Really. It could be, I'm, I'm just, I'm not that needy. Yeah. So I yeah, yeah. just show up and, and I'll just show up and that's it, you know? Yeah. I'm the same. Uh, even if my kids are involved, I'm super happy. Like they, they usually just like overwhelm me with like things, you know, for, for Mother's Day or any type of event. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But what I always do is buy my kids like Valentine's Day gifts because they're girls. So I always buy them like teddy bears and like you know, something mm-hmm. like to spoil them. But that's how I want my partner to show up. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. For me, it's definitely, I love the surprise. Like surprises to me are more important than the actual surprise, whatever that is. Right. Right. So it can be really small, but like if it's unexpected, mm-hmm. oh my God, that's like the best thing for yes. me. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. And, I, and I'm like you, I don't care about that. The actual, about the actual gift. Me yeah. No. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be it anything can, it, it big, doesn't have to be but anything it's the thought. Special. Yeah. It's the thought. Like it if is. you noticed, so I've told this to my family, if I, I don't really buy a lot of stuff for myself. I don't mm-hmm. really often like splurge on things for myself. So anytime I'm out with them, I'm, I've told them in the past, like, if you notice me looking at something, a shirt, a thing, you notice, like, if you guys pay attention I leave clues all the time. Right. And I actually kind of do it on purpose because I don't want to tell you what I want. Look, I'm just one of those people. Does it go through like one year and out the other? No, they're they're pretty good. They're good? They're they're, they're, Okay. Mm, Yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Like my oldest is probably the best because she's very, very like attuned and in tune with stuff. So she notices me like looking at stuff online. She's like, she'll kind of like tell everybody, oh, mommy really wants this thing. Like keep it on, like she'll keep a running list over the year of like things like she kind of does this for the whole family. So by Christmas, I'm really thankful because she's like, oh, um, she wants like these five different things. Like my, oh. you know, my son wants these five different things. And she like, she'll just listen to what people are talking about and what they're looking at. And so I love, I love that. Like for me, I, I think that's, yeah, that's I'm the most too. important thing. I'm simple too. Yeah. If, if like, my kids remember. Right. I'm Something like, that you to, mentioned. Yeah, exactly. To the moon. 100%. If my husband remembers. That's amazing. He hasn't yet. <laughs> That's a, I'm sure he has at oh some gosh. point in his life. Poor guy. You're here. You made it to 18, girl. I know. It's true. Yes. It's true. Yes. I did. You know, it's another interesting thought that I had on on relationships in general. I find that people care, care more about, or it seems to be like you have a successful relationship when you've been together for a long time. Yes. And I don't believe that. No, well, I don't. I don't actually subscribe to that. Like, yes, I've had a long relationship, but has it been quality? Like, there's lots of people that stay together for a long period of time, and they don't really like each other. They do it for many reasons, right? Sometimes it's for their family or the kids yes, or whatever. Yes. Sometimes they do it because it's convenient. Like, it's just too much effort to split and and go their own separate ways or whatever right. it is. But I don't think that that's actually a, a hallmark of a good relationship. Yeah. And I think that we, I think people need to kind of get out of the idea that if you've been together long, that automatically means that it's successful. Yeah. And like, but it doesn't you know, have to be perfect, right? Yeah. Like yeah. there's, there's, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be, you know, illness potentially, but that's what you sign up for, right? There's going to be tough times. Um, It's getting through them and then coming back to a place where you're, you know, together and can look at each other and say, okay, you know, we've made it through. We've, we're going to do this, right? We're together. Um, Yeah. If you can still, if you can still say that you're committed at the end of all of that, you're committed to actually staying together, that's success. Yes. Right? Like it's that desire, like motivation, just like romance will kind of die after the first little while. But if you stay committed which is sort of like a different level mm-hmm. of, of um, you know, uh, what you would want in a relationship. That, that being committed is, is really the thing that's going to, you know, stick together. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting, too. One other thing that kind of brings to mind, 
I've heard somewhere, it's probably from, probably from Dr. Phil or something, um, I heard that um, relationships in general will weather storms as long as one person is still in love. You mm-hmm. can have one person that's sort of floundering and not, not, and the other person picks up the slack. Right. And as long as you're not both in the mode of like, we're both not doing our, our part. Right. Or we're both not motivated or both not committed at the same time. That's when you have um, marital breakdowns and relationship mm-hmm. breakdowns. Right. So it's almost like you can be riding these waves of like, I'm really not into it right now, but he is. He can, your partner can kind of carry you through that time until you feel back up on, on track. Right. Um, and then they can kind of slack off. So it's really interesting that sometimes I feel like dynamics work that way too. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, I also do think that this is, this is m- most times when you're trying to have a perfect relationship or fix your relationship, you're thinking about this ideal that may not exist, right? Um, but there's nothing wrong with continuing to try to have an ideal. There's nothing wrong with, hey, we're going to just keep trying, you know, to find As long that as love. you both want to. Exactly. To find that love, to find all the things that make us tick, to uh, be with our partner 100, like to be in that relationship 100. There's nothing wrong with that. So when you when you think about your partner, especially because it's Valentine's and, uh, you know, it's my last thought uh, that I wanted to express Um, there's nothing wrong with loving a little more or trying a little more or pushing a little more or adventuring a little more, you know, and saying to yourself, you know what, this is, this is our one life together. This is what we want to do. Um, how can I make her happy? How can I make him happy? Work together, go through those, you know, love languages or whatever you need to express to each other and, you know, Go for it, 100%. If anything, we need more relationships these days that stay together. I love that. Regardless, right? Yeah, Yeah. that is a beautiful note to end on. Yeah. (laughs) I love it, I love it. Thank you so much for joining us today, guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you.